Good morning, everyone. Phil here. Welcome to the Level 1 Podcast Dungeon Edition. Because today we're playing Resident Evil Zero, and I said, well, if we're going to use a day with a red background and coloring motif, obviously it should be the day when we're fighting blood-sucking zombies and, you know, bodies decaying, ripping off headshots, epic gore. So why not, right? So welcome back. Today is Saturday. The 6th of January, 2024. Of course, I am your host, DSP. And uh, we got a chill podcast today. And what I mean by that is that today we don't have anything too crazy to talk about. There's no huge announcements. There's no giant updates. What I'd like to do is get everyone up to speed on the things I'm doing. I do have an update regarding DSP Throwback, which I... It's good news. I want to talk with you guys about the new channel because I'm excited for its relaunch that's now been for a few days. Um... And kind of give you an update on the status uh, of that channel. Um, plus, some cool upcoming stuff this week. We got our year-end series coming up finally this week. And a very special stream on Wednesday night coming up. All kinds of fun stuff, right? But, nothing crazy today. No big stories. No news or anything to discuss. So today is a way more laid-back stream, just so everybody knows. Lots of opportunity probably for Q&A and stuff later on in the show. Alright? So, <clears throat> I hope that you're all doing well. Welcome to the weekend. And uh, for me, we're continuing on with all the awesome playthroughs that I'm currently doing. Um, funny, because as I've told you guys, typically January is a slow month. Typically January is the month where everything slows down to a crawl. There's almost nothing going on in gaming. And for me, it's kind of a month that we just kind of have busy work to get through until we get to new releases. But this year, I'm in the midst of so many fun and awesome playthroughs. I've got the relaunch. Uh, of DSP throwback, which is happening. Obviously, we've got other things going on behind the scenes, like this documentary and other things, so it's made everything feel very exciting, right? Like, I certainly feel like things are reinvigorated and people are having a good time, no matter what you're watching. And the thing is, you have so many different things to watch, whether it's an ongoing Baldur's Gate 3 playthrough, which you guys wanted for most of last year, and now it's happening. Whether it's Survival Horror returning with Resident Evil Zero like we're going to play later today. Um, or maybe your indie game flair with Sea of Stars, right? Maybe you're into the classics, the old school commentary and throwback gameplay I used to do over a decade ago. You have that on DSP Throwback. So basically there's something for everyone going on right now. <clears throat> and I'm very excited for that, okay? So one thing I'd like to say before we get into, you know... Uh, recapping how things went yesterday and everything. I just want to say it is essentially the last few days where you all can vote on your viewer's choice best playthroughs of 2023. The two polls have been live for several days. If you haven't found them yet, they're on the main channel page here of DSP Gaming on the community tab, or there's two polls <clears throat> that are running. If you type exclamation point best of one or exclamation point best of two, those are the two commands. Why two polls? Because YouTube is limited and only lets you put five options into a poll. I think that's really stupid and something they could easily fix, but they haven't improved it in many years. So I had to do two polls of five games each. Please vote on which of those playthroughs were your favorite ones. Remember, those are nominated by you. You guys nominated those over the course of a month, and now you get to narrow that down to your, your favorite ones. Um, I need that input by Monday night because Tuesday is when we're going to be doing that countdown. Monday night, we're doing the most disappointing games of 2023 countdown. Those are my picks. Then Tuesday night, we're doing your best playthroughs of 2023 countdown, followed directly by my Game of the Year awards, okay? So lots of cool and fun stuff coming up this week. Please vote if you haven't yet. Um, all right, so now let us go back to yesterday briefly and just talk about everything that happened. So first of all, big update on DSP throwback, okay? So... DSP Throwback is my rebranded channel. It used to be called KO Gaming back in 2016, but it's been sitting there defunct for five and a half years. I've rebranded it to DSP Throwback. And by the way, just so you guys know, there's work actively being done on the channel. Um, the stuff that you see there, for example, that channel banner, that's a placeholder. That's just something we threw up there quickly to have there. But there will likely be much improved design to that channel uh, coming up. It's all the work in process, okay? So DSP Throwback, you can find it at youtube.com forward slash at DSP Throwback. This channel officially launched on Thursday, 
and part one of Final Fantasy XIII, the original game from 2010, but remastered by running it through all these upscaling filters and improvements. Uh, it's been live now for two days? Two days. And I am pleased to say it seems like there's a good amount of people who are interested in seeing my classic playthroughs remastered and re-released in this method. So taking those 10 minute parts and combining them into 30 minute parts, putting a proper thumbnail and titling the part appropriately so you know what happens in that part, adding it to a proper playlist for easy digestibility when you're watching and easy resuming of your viewing, um, upscaling the visuals to full HD. Previously they were like watching peach fuzz. It was terrible because it was my camera pointed at a TV. So now they're crisp. Um, and also uh, putting a filter over the audio, which used to just be terrible mono audio, and uh, using some AI to try to improve that. So basically a lot of improvements, okay? Um, part one now, after two days, has <clears throat> uh, something like 3,000 views or more, which is not bad for an ancient playthrough, okay? Now, that's probably just going to be part one. The other parts likely will not get that many views. In fact, I was expecting at most a few hundred views on each part moving forward. Keep in mind, this is a very lengthy JRPG. Once we get into the other playthroughs that are going to be on this channel, like Red Dead Redemption or L.A. Noir, you may see a little bit different because it's going to probably be for a different audience for a different style of game. But for a JRPG, especially an old one like this, I'm not expecting an insano amount of views or anything. But I am happy to see that people are interested. Um, so part two went live yesterday. And then part three literally just went live right before this stream. Um, the way I'm doing it is this. I don't know if we're going to have enough videos to have a new video every day. If we do, I will release a new video every single day. Okay? But I don't know if we're going to have that many. It depends because there's a lot of work involved. In fact, just to give you an example. So last night, I am uploading... My, my videos to DSP Gaming from the night. I'm uploading my Street Fighter 6 E-Honda videos and I'm uploading my daily wrap. And I'm like, all right, so now what I want to do is I want to upload a bunch of the new raw footage for Final Fantasy 13 so these can now be run through the editor and everything and get them ready to be going live on DSP Throwback. So here's the thing about old school external hard drives. They don't have an off button. They don't even have an on button. The only way they work is that you plug them into power and then you plug them in the USB, and then they just turn on, and they start running. And if you want to turn it off, you have to completely unplug it. It's weird, I know, but that's how they were back then. To, you know, Now they probably have on-off switches, everything. Nothing. They have nothing like that back then. We're talking a 15-year-old external hard drive, okay? So, I'm already uploading my videos to DSP Gaming. I plug in the external hard drive. It causes everything on my computer to go haywire. Basically, the uploads that are uploading to DSP Gaming error out. It says, oh, sorry, can't finish, can't process, start over. I was like, what? So how does plugging an external hard drive from 15 years ago into my PC cause my uploads from a PC hard drive to error out? <laughs> what? I was like, you know what I mean? This is old technology. So I was like, what the hell? Like, How could it even be done that? So I just start the uploads over last night. I was like, oh, that sucks. You know, I don't really have to want to have to start the uploads over, but what are you going to do? Um, so anyway, um, so yeah, so last night I queued up a bunch more, uploaded them. And here's, here's what I'd like to do. Ideally, if I can have one new video every day, that would be amazing. But there's no guarantees. You don't know how long you might run into problems with editing of, an, of a video that'll hold things up. Um... Keep in mind, it's not me doing the editing. It's other people behind the scenes doing this work for me because I can't do it. I don't have the time to do it. And so it's so nice of them to, to be doing this for the community. Um, but there's no guarantees that it'll always go smoothly or we'll have one a day, all right? So FYI, if I can put out one part of Final Fantasy 13 a day, there will be. But I'm not promising that because I don't want to overpromise and underdeliver. You know that's not me. Um, but here's how it's going to work. So as videos become available on the channel, what I'm going to do is I'm going to schedule them each day to go live at a certain time. Usually what I'll do is I'll do it in the morning. So that's what I do with DSP Reacts right now, where I have each part goes live at like 10 a.m., one a day, all week. So that's probably what I'll do for DSP Throwback 
is I'll have it so that one part will go live a day uh, around 10 a.m. And what the thing is going to happen is I'm going to put these into the playlist ahead of time. So what I don't want people to do is freak out because let's say, for example, right now you're watching Final Fantasy 13 over on DSP Throwback and you hit play. So part one plays half an hour, part two plays half an hour, part three, which is brand new, just went live like 20 minutes ago, that plays, that's a half an hour. And then all of a sudden YouTube says, error, this video has been removed from YouTube. And you're like, whoa, whoa, what? What happened? Where's part four? Is it removed? Don't worry, it's not. What YouTube does, because again, YouTube is so weird, it gives you that message if you try to watch a video that's not yet published, okay? So right now, that's exactly what's happened. I have three parts of Final Fantasy 13 live. Part four is already done and ready to go, but I want to release one a day. So it's in the playlist. It's scheduled to go live tomorrow morning, but I don't want you to freak out if you're watching the playlist and it says, oh, the video's gone. It didn't get deleted or anything, okay? That's just how YouTube reports a video that's not published yet. So that is my goal, if possible, to try to get one video a day and keep that playthrough moving. We did the math yesterday. The original Final Fantasy uh, 13 playthrough was between 35 to 40 hours long. Let's assume it's 35 hours long. That would mean the playthrough would be 70 parts. So I want you to think about that. That would mean that playthrough, if we do one video a day, that's going to be running all through January, all through February, and into early March before we finish the playthrough, okay? And this is what you guys got to understand when it comes to this stuff is it takes ages, you know, to get through it unless I flood the channel. Do I want to flood that channel with 100 videos? No. This was always my concern with putting up the legacy content. There's a difference between, oh, I'm playing a game live new and I do two parts a day slowly versus, oh, I have this whole playthrough ready to go, right? I don't want to just upload it all in one go and then everyone who's subscribed, because there's over 400 people who subscribed to the channel since I made this announcement earlier in the week. That's awesome. Over 400 new subs who are interested in watching these videos. I don't want to lose 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 subs now on the channel because I put too many videos up too fast and people leave in droves, right? Um, that would be counterproductive. So that's the plan. Now, I would say once we get, I don't know, once we get like halfway through Final Fantasy 13, so let's say in a month's time, we're, we're in early February, right? What I'd probably do is I would ask you guys, what's the next playthrough you want to see? Because here's the options. Red Dead Redemption, L.A. Noir, the Undead Nightmare DLC for Red Dead Redemption, or the Suicide Kings online co-op series, okay? That's the lost media playthroughs that I've never uploaded so far. Now, there's also some Kung Fu Panda footage. There's also some Dante's Inferno playthrough. Um, those you guys have never seen. They were never really uploaded anywhere to YouTube to be visible. So it's not like those are ones you've seen and, oh, you want to see them again because they were removed. Those you just have never seen. But there's not a lot of those. It's only a few parts. So that would be very short-lived stuff, okay? But I, the way I see it is you choose what's next, right? And then whatever you vote, maybe we'll do a poll, public poll there. And whatever you guys vote for, that's the one that would then be edited next and be put up next. Um, when, once we get all the lost media, so once L.A. Noir Red Dead is up, then, if the channel is successful, if you guys are enjoying the content and you're still watching it and there's decent viewership and there's demand for more, uh, I would be totally, 100% ready to say, hey, let's take the original playthroughs from Dark Side Phil that look crappy and let's do the same treatment to them like we're doing with these and put those up on DSP Throwback as well. So now you wouldn't have to go back to the original channel and watch the awful quality. We could maybe take Spider-Man Web of Shadows, right? What an epic original playthrough that I did back in the day. Um, or any of those classic playthroughs and make them much, much better, okay? Uh, that's what I'm thinking. But really, it's up to you guys what you want on that channel ultimately, all right? Now, I do have an update, and I want to check. I'm, I'm curious if they've updated it. YouTube tends to drag its feet when it comes to tracking stats, which I think is dumb because obviously they should be tracking live and they just don't. But FYI, YouTube is currently ca counting 
public watch hours on DSP Throwback, okay? The way YouTube works is to qualify for the YouTube Partner Program, you need to have a certain amount of subscribers, 500. Obviously, I have that on the channel. A certain amount of video uploads in 90 days, three. I have that on the channel. But then you need a certain amount of public watch hours to qualify to be back into the Partner Program. And I'm tracking it, and it says you need 4,000 public watch hours, all right? Already, just between uh, <clears throat> the uh, the part one, two, and I guess three just went live, but between part one and two of Final Fantasy 13 and that announcement vlog I did earlier this week, we're already at 2,185 public watch hours and climbing. So it's increasing. What it is is YouTube's dragging their feet. Like, it said that number for almost two days now. So it's going, basically the way I see it, if, if the momentum stays the way it is, within a week I'm going to requalify for the partner program. Okay, now don't worry, I told you, I have absolutely no plans to be setting up memberships um, or anything like that. What I, The only real reason I want to get back in the partner program is to be able to en enable some ads on the content on that channel. All right, because right now already some people went back and watched some of the old videos. I didn't get any credit for those because it's not partnered anymore, right? And these new videos you're watching, this Final Fantasy 13, I didn't get anything for those, all right? Because I have to get this channel repartnered. Once it's repartnered, um, then there should be some ads running on the videos. And then I'll make a little bit, which, you know, over time, it should grow to be more decent. To start, it probably will be like nothing. You know, probably in a month, I'll make like $10, right? But that's the point, is I've had these legacy, legacy playthroughs up, and we got more people checking them out, and then people are actively voting and choosing. What's the next retro playthrough you want to see made modern, right? And there could have this community effort of everyone kind of talking with each other about what they want and everything, people watching the different playthroughs. That's really when it could pick up and get more traction. So I guess we'll see what happens, but I'm tracking this actively. Like I said, they haven't updated this in two days. I know they're dragging their feet with the tracking of channels, so... Hopefully within a couple more days, the channel will requalify. I can repartner it, and then we can keep moving forward with that, okay? Now, long term, as I told you, the plans for the channel also are that eventually, perhaps, every once in a while, I'll just jump on there for a random night stream and just hang out with you guys and say, hey, let's do a throwback talk where people we talk about the old days of YouTube, and you can ask me questions about being an old-school YouTuber, um, and we can talk about what it was like setting up a camera and working with those elements of stuff back in the day before all the modernized stuff and also long term again once more playthroughs are up on the channel right once we get full playthroughs up maybe we could have nights where i do a throwback re reaction night where i go back and react to my old content we watch like an hour of an old playthrough together and i laugh and react to my old commentary and stuff like that right um so i think that would be neat too uh so that's what i mean the channel has great potential i want to thank you so far all right um for that i mean really you guys have been great checking it out and you know if you like that old style stuff you're basically you're in for a treat because we've got tons of it right like it's all stacked up ready to go it's just a matter of time and work you know i wish i could instantly give you everything you want but that's sadly not reality it takes a while to, to do this kind of work especially you know the upscaling takes hours and hours on each video so would you guys like a throwback link so people are, are asking, can we get a throwback link in the chat? Sure, you can do that. I'm going to do it right now. Here we go. Ready? Add a command. We're going to do a throwback, a throwback command right now. Check out DSP throwback here where you can find my old playthroughs. Newly remastered for a modern audience. Enjoy. So. So let's test and see if this works. Because I don't know if I have to put a full link or not. Okay, I just created it. If you guys want to try it, it's the throwback command, exclamation point throwback. <clears throat> Let me know if that works, guys. For some reason, the H is capitalized in throwback. I can fix that.
Does the link work? It works? Cool. As long as the link works, excellent. Um, oh, my stupid nose. Okay. And I guess people are saying also put a link into your channel. Uh, let me see here. If you go to the bottom of my main channel page, it shows in related channels. It's already there. It's at the very ch bottom of my main channel page. It shows DSP Reacts, DSP Throwback, and the original Dark Side Phil channel. But if you want me to put another link, uh, I guess I could put it here at a link. Well, okay, here's what I'll do. See if this works. So we'll see if this works. I think I just added a link to my main channel page as well, but it might take a few minutes to show up. It doesn't always just show up instantly, but it might be there live. We'll see. Okay. Anyway, so there you go. Now you have a link in the chat and you have a link on the main channel page to DSP Throwback, okay? So again, if you haven't checked it out yet, give it a look. Uh, certainly, I know it's not going to be for everyone. Not everyone's interested in Final Fantasy 13 of all games. I think many more people may be interested in the Rockstar games that are missing. And yes, those will eventually go up, but we, you know, we started with Final Fantasy 13, so I guess we'll continue on. The only thing I would say is definitely if people like complain and we're like, it's too much Final Fantasy, can you mix it up and maybe do a Rockstar game alongside and alternate? I would maybe consider that too. So that's up to you guys what you want. Um, but again, if I work on one, it means less work on the other, right? So if we start on, let's say, El Noir, then that means you're not going to get as much Final Fantasy 13. Okay? So let's let it roll with Final Fantasy 13 for now. And then you guys maybe give me your feedback over the week. And if you like that pacing, great. If not, if you want something different, maybe we'll mix it up. Right, and alternate between the two or whatever. So there you go. Okay? Cool. All right, so DSP throwback in full effect. I'll let you guys know if and when more changes happen. New videos should be going live likely every day, <clears throat> at least for now, and we'll see if that changes or not. And don't freak out if you're watching a playlist and a video says it's not available. It just means it's not published yet. Okay? Partner hopefully soon. It'd be great to repartner that channel soon, maybe within the next few days, and go and, and move on from there. Okay? Cool. Um, all right. Playthroughs. Yesterday we did more Baldur's Gate 3. Went well. Uh, we did more overworld exploration. Uh, went westward and actually found a town that was sacked by, by a group of people. And a big fire that was going on. And we had to rescue someone. And we did that. And it continued on with the plot. And we went further. And we ran into the Gith. And there was an interaction between the Gith and, uh... Lazel, and it was interesting because now Lazel's back in my party, and actually she got way better at level 5, and I like the character more, so I might keep her in the party for a while instead of Karlak. Um, so that was going good. And then last night, Street Fighter, Friday Night Fights, I went back to E-Honda. I'm pleased to say that I remembered how to play with E-Honda and was doing some pretty good combos and the light. But, yeah, the game just is not good online anymore. It really has fallen apart to the point where, like, there's people who in Street Fighter 6 have actually found ways to do patterns that you can't stop unless you just sit there and block because they've realized that the netcode is not reactive enough. You can't react enough to certain things they do. Like there was a Blanca player who literally would at a moment's notice just do uh, the meter burned version of the jump and grab. And when he did it, the animation was glitched. Like, instead of jumping and grabbing, it would be like, Roo! like, it wouldn't even look right. It would look, like, screwed up. There was this one time he did a drive rush across the screen, 
and it completely missed because I jumped, but it was like stuttering. It was like, do, 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 and then a weird flip, and then all of a sudden he was turning around hitting me again, and I'm like, that's not, that's not the real game. You know what I mean? Like playing this game online, people have found these broken ways to do things because it's rollback netcode, and it, they're, they're getting win. That guy had almost 1,600 master points, and he didn't even understand basic stuff about fighting games. He just found abusive strategies that you can get away with because his internet connection wasn't so good, and no one can react to the shit he's doing because it's a bad connection. And this, sadly, is rollback netcode. Like, I remember back in the day when it was first introduced in the mid-2000s, and I'm trying to play people in Super Turbo, and it was the same shit. You'd find someone who literally had a bad connection, and they would say, watch this, and run away the whole round just throwing fireballs. You couldn't even get to them. You'd try to jump, you'd try to move, it wouldn't work. It would skip, it would fuck around, and you would never be able to beat them, and they had ranks, like rankings and shit, by just walking around in their fucking shit connection throwing fireballs, and you couldn't do anything about it, you know? And it's like, wow. This is really the epitome of fighting games, huh? This is what the netcode everyone wants is where people get away with trash gameplay because their connection sucks. It's just stupid. But that's really the state of Street Fighter VI at this point. Um, it's not that I don't enjoy playing it. It's that I just can't really take it seriously anymore. There's no point. Like I feel like I'm, I'm very happy that I played Street Fighter VI as much as I did when I did. Because in those formative months, those first four or five months the game was out... You were able to play and learn. Now what's happened is everyone has settled into their top characters and their abusive online strategies, and playing that game isn't even representative of, like, a competitive fighting game at this point with the shit that people get away with and do. And none of that would fly without the online problem. You know, if it was offline, those strategies would not work. It's only online shit. It's super safe crap. And uh, it's just not representative of, I feel, what that game can do at a high level. If you were to watch a tournament... You're going to see a whole different level of gameplay than when you're watching these, these random online play of these people and their, their trash strategies that work because you can't do anything about it online. You know what I'm saying? We are in the last hurrah of Street Fighter VI. We've got <clears throat> next week Friday Night Fights, maybe two more streams after that. And then Street Fighter VI is getting a rest as I play Tekken 8. Will Tekken 8 be any better? I don't know. I also don't know if I'm going to get good at Tekken 8 or not. I'm not trying to give anyone any overinflated notions of my skill. I'm not good at Tekken. I'm just not, you know. I never really got competitively good at Tekken any time in the last 20 years. The, the last time I was good at Tekken was like Tekken 3. <laughs> you know, so that's a long time ago. Um, So I wouldn't expect much. Uh, I hope that you guys will still check out Tekken because I'm going to enjoy it. Playing through the story. Uh, trying out characters online. Yes, I will try to study videos and strategies to try to get better at the game, but I'm not expecting to get competitively good. I'm just expecting to hopefully enjoy the game for a while, okay? So, so that's coming out uh, the 26th, and I'll be playing that. Um, all right, so what's going on in the schedule this week? Today, it's the return of Resident Evil Zero Remastered. Very excited for this today. Uh, playthrough so far going well. First three hours were fun. That train is very tedious, like very tedious, because you have to backtrack a million times to get off the train. But now that we're out of the train and we're in the mansion, I think the playthrough is going to be much better. Typically, when you get to the mansion area of any Resident Evil game, that's when it hits its stride, and I'm feeling that. It's funny because I told you guys I didn't really remember much about this game because I played it eight years ago. Uh, as we hit the mansion, <clears throat> immediately I was like, oh, I don't remember any of this. And then I walked into this room with the podium. I'm like, that kind of, I, I kind of remember that. And then we went into this room upstairs with all these cranks with chains. I was like, no, nah, I totally remember this because I think, if I remember correctly, there's like a boss or something coming up. And you need to use those cranks for the boss or something like that, if I remember correctly. Like, there's just something to do with that. So I'm like, all right, I'm starting to get some little hints of re recollections of this game from eight years ago. Um, but I'm enjoying it. Like, I'm having a good time with it. I'm, I'm happy to be playing classic survival horror. It's a different vibe than playing these modern remasters of Resident Evil when you're playing one of these classics. I mean, it's good that it has the upgraded visuals, but, uh, you know, the tank-style controls, the limited ammo, the fact that you can't really move out of the way of an enemy. And, you know, it's just a different vibe. It really is. It's that classic feel. Um, so, more of that today on the mainstream. And then tonight, more Sea of Stars. We're four hours in. We've, uh, we've built quite the party. we got three playable characters, and we got a guest party member who apparently is there for lore purposes. Um, we're heading into a totally new area of the game. 
uh, the game is great. Love the music. Love the gameplay elements. So reminiscent of these RPG series that I played when I was a kid, like Chrono Trigger, Super Mario RPG, uh, Golden Sun to some extent. Sweet it in. Like it reminds me of all these different games. So I'm just having a great time right now with the game, and I hope that you'll join me for a chill stream tonight. That's definitely the vibe of those that, those streams. Very chill. Very laid back. Lots of talking. Lots of interacting with the chat. Not necessarily 100% always focused on the game, and that's fine. Okay? I'm having a good time with that, and I hope that you guys will join me for that tonight. Tomorrow is my weird day. What I mean by that is there's no gameplay tomorrow. My first stream tomorrow is DSP versus the Internet, my weekly react show over on my DSP Reacts channel. Now, if you're a subscriber on that channel, welcome. Thank you for watching the content. Enjoy. If you're a member on that channel, well last chance for you to post up clips for tomorrow's react show because as you know every saturday night after my late stream ends is when i make the playlist for that channel so i need you to please do me a favor and nominate those clips put them in uh post them up right away by the end of today the more clips we get the better the show is always fun doing my react show every single week i'm not doing a late stream tomorrow night because two reasons number one i'm filming private videos for patrons. My patrons pledge for the month and I owe them a few videos, so I'm going to be making those. But in addition, I need some extra time to work on my year-end series, which begin Monday night. So I'm going to uh, basically make my rankings. I'm going to determine what's my game of the year, what's the most disappointing games of the year, rank them. And then what I got to do is get that video footage together, and I need to put that into OBS, my broadcast program. So on that night, the way we do it is as if I'm, I'm playing a game. So for example, let's say this were my most disappointing games. So what would happen is I'd be over here commenting and behind me I'll play footage of one of my most disappointing games of the year and I'll tell you why I felt that game was so disappointing. Okay? So I do that for all the different games. Uh, disappointing and my game of the year awards. So that should be fun. Uh, but I need to set that up. I need to get all of that together. It doesn't just happen. I need to actually get the videos queued up and get them input into OBS and everything. So I'll be working on that tomorrow night, okay? So then Monday, it's Baldur's Gate 3. And then on the late stream, it is the most disappointing games of the year countdown. I guarantee you that disappointing games of the year countdown at a minimum is going to be around 90 minutes to get through. Because there's at least 10 games I want to talk about. I probably want to talk about each one for several minutes to tell you what I found so disappointing about them, especially the most disappointing games of last year, like the top three. <laughs> the top three are, like, terrifying that they're so disappointing, and I have a lot to say about them, okay? So, that's going to be Monday night. Then Tuesday, it'll be more Resident Evil Zero Remastered, and Tuesday night, we're going to start with your viewer's choice best playthroughs of the year and count those down. And then we're going to count down my Game of the Year awards, okay? Wednesday, more Baldur's Gate 3. Wednesday night's late stream is a very special late night stream. You're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be very exciting and hype. And if you can be here on Wednesday night for the late stream, please make it. That is all I'm telling you. And already I see speculation. People are saying, oh, it's going to be this. It's going to be that. It has to do with this. It has to do with that. No one knows because I haven't given you a single hint. So absolutely no one actually knows what Wednesday night is all about. But all I'm going to tell you is that Wednesday night, be here if you can. It's going to be a very special stream, a very special vibe. And I hope that you guys will join me if you can make it on Wednesday night. That's all I'm saying. That's it. I will not spoil because if I even give you a little hint, it will spoil everything. And I'm not going to spoil, okay? Okay, now, next week, when I, when I say next week, I mean starting Friday because Thursday is my day off, it'll be a balance again. Baldur's Gate 3, Resident Evil Zero Remastered, Sea of Stars, a little bit of Street Fighter here and there. If we have extra time, which I don't know if we will or not, I may or may not look to do maybe like a smaller indie game just for a couple sessions. Maybe I'll try out that pizza tower you guys talked about or whatever. Only because at this point, <clears throat> there's just not enough time to add another new game to the mix and into the rotation. There's not. If I add something in, we'll never finish it, okay? So instead, maybe if there's a, a small opportunity to do something quick or in there for variety's sake, I will interject something quickly. But remember, the new releases come out the 26th, all right? So 20 days from now is the new releases. Um, 
which I'm uh, very excited for. You know, a combination of Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, a super awesome JRPG, the sequel to my game of the year 2020, a game that I cannot wait to play. Apparently not only has insane amounts of content, but also tons of improvements from the original game, even as a virtual city that you build that's like Animal Crossing in it. I mean, holy crap, this game's going to be amazing. And then you got Tekken 8, which is also, by all reports, going to be amazing. Amazing graphics, great gameplay elements, a wide cast of characters, a cool story mode, but other modes as well. It's sounding like those two games are going to be outstanding and are going to carry us, you know, into truly the first new release content of the new year. It's going to be very exciting, okay? So, I hope that you guys are excited for that. I am too. So, that's basically the general idea for what's coming up for the rest of this month, okay? And then, remember, the next big thing, I'm going to be doing a Super Bowl marathon event just like I did one last year. So, this year, I believe the Super Bowl, people said it was like February 11th. So, if that's the case, I'll hold it the Saturday before, on the tent, it'll be a marathon. I'll dress up like a like an American football player, wearing jerseys and a football helmet. I'll probably have some booze and some food. We just got to figure out what you guys want me to do. Do you want me to play old throwback football games? Do you want me to do some fighting games? Do you want to just sit around and watch some ads together, like Super Bowl ads, and laugh? We have a million things we could do that day. I kind of want to treat it like a party atmosphere. I don't want it to be like a serious, oh my god, we have to play five games and <clears throat> make sure we hit all the criteria during the day. I'd rather have it be way more relaxing. Okay, so let's start talking about that. We have over a month to figure it out, but let's start talking about that because that is the next big marathon event that I'd like to do. Okay, um, <clears throat> okay, um, guess what? I covered all the topics that I wanted to cover today. All right, so just a couple things I'd like to bring your attention to down here. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, yes, it happened after having several weeks above 700 members here on the channel. We dipped a ton overnight. We lost like 40 members to the channel overnight. Okay? Why? A member bomb expired. I think there was a 50 member bomb that happened early on in December and it expired. Okay? It happens. It's going to happen. All right? But I want to thank you guys. You've been so supportive over these last several months. The, the holiday season was great. <clears throat> so, if you'd like to support the channel today, I know for a fact, because we're playing Resident Evil, we're probably going to have a good crowd here on the stream once I start with the game. Um, today would be a great day if you wanted to support the channel with either becoming a member or gifting some memberships to the community. I'm sure we'll have a lot of people waiting in the wings who'd be ready to accept them and very grateful. Okay? That's one way you can help. Obviously, you can super chat. And then, of course, the tip skull. We always try to hit the tier one tip skull on every stream. Uh, you guys have been great about that recently and helped a lot. Again, thank you. This has been a really solid, awesome start to the new year. <clears throat> Obviously, I'd like to keep that momentum going and at least hit the Tier 1 tip skull for today's stream if possible. Okay, so remember, that's how I make my living. Ad revenue, it's great that it exists, okay, but it's not amazing. It's not like it used to be back in the day, um, you know. Even having ads enabled on all my videos on this channel, it doesn't amount to that much. Really, the vast majority of my income is what comes in during the live streams. So if you like this content, if you enjoy the podcast, if you enjoy the gameplay, please support the content in some way. If you're someone who just listens to this show every day, on demand after the fact, um, there's still other ways you could contribute. Becoming a member yourself. Uh, if you take a look at any video, a lot of the times these videos are eligible for super thanks. That's a way to do a contribution through the video and you actually get like a highlighted comment for it. Or in the description of all my videos, there's a tips link and you can leave a tip. But particularly if you like a certain piece of content, please consider tipping for it, okay? <clears throat> so thank you guys in advance for any contributions. And I certainly hope that uh, we will hit, you know, the goals for today's stream. We'll see how it goes and go from there, okay? <clears throat> cool. All right, before we, we continue... My allergies, it's not really my allergies, it's post-nasal drip. I woke up this morning, it was really bad. I don't know why. I hate when this happens because then it bothers me all day, and it is. Like, my left nostril is congested, and I got this drip going down. I just want to go blow my nose quickly, and then I'm gonna, we're going to continue on with the show. Okay, so give me one sec.
that's a little better. Oh, <sighs> all right. <laughs> all right, so before we begin with anything, I'd like to do a shout out. Uh, two shout outs this morning. First of all, I believe it was Nico who earlier either re upped their membership or became a member, but then also Sarah either re upped her membership and became a member. I can't tell which was which because one was a re up and one was a fresh one. So I don't know which is which, but it will count as one new one. That I can see. So thank you for that. Our first new membership of the day. My goal is to try to hit 685 members today, try to gain around 15 ish over the course of the two streams of the day. Thanks in advance. <clears throat> Sound good? Uh, Muckman says, what about setting up a scheduled stream for Wednesday night so people can be notified and spread awareness? If not, no worries. I was doing that for a while. Remember, I was actually setting up streams days in advance. What ended up happening was people got so confused because I'd have like five, six streams showing on my main channel page. And people were telling me that it was too confusing to have that many streams. They, were, they couldn't even tell which one was next. I know that they're dated and timed. But I guess the way that YouTube works, it's confusing. Um, so now what I do, I only set up the streams for the next day. So that way, you only know what's coming the next day and you don't get confused of what's two, three days ahead. All right? I guess that was the problem. Like, for example, I would set up the streams and it would say Resident Evil Zero, Sea of Stars, The Podcast, Baldur's Gate 3, The Game of the Year Awards, right? And I would set all that up and people would be like, oh, so Baldur's Gate 3 is next. Like, no, that's like two days ahead. But it's right there on the page. You see? <laughs> but uh, what I might do, you're right. I might hype it up a day or two early and I might put a, a thing on it, a placeholder. We'll see. Yeah, Nico says, so I was a member in the past. It expired. I renewed it today. I don't know how YouTube counts it. <clears throat> Basically, I know this sounds weird. If, you're, if your membership completely expired and you did not have a membership and you renew it, it counts as a new membership because it had already expired and subtracted from the total and then it renews it. If you're someone who was a member and you auto renewed, but you never had a lapsed membership because of it, it doesn't count as a new one because it never technically subtracted one to begin with. Does that make sense? So literally you and Sarah might've actually renewed your memberships in exactly the same way, but yours expired and hers didn't and yours will count as a new member, but hers won't. Or vice versa. It's confusing. Okay, it doesn't matter. It, do it really doesn't matter. It's just semantics at this point, okay? <laughs> All right. So, guys, here's the deal. <clears throat> so far, I don't think I have anything to shout out. I'm just double-checking. I shouted out the, the memberships, but that's all I'm seeing. I don't see any Super Chats. But I will say this again, and this is very important to talk about. It is continuing this pattern that PayPal is not sending me all of the notifications for tips. Every day now, I'm getting one or two people who are like, hey, Phil, just so you know, I did send you a tip and you haven't shouted it out. Can you check? And when I check, lo and behold, their tip is there. So for some reason, PayPal is not sending me all of the notifications. It's sending me most, but not all. All right? So if you do contribute and you tip and you notice after like 15, 20 minutes, I'm not shouting it out please tag me in the chat and let me know because I want to give grat uh, gratitude to every single person who supports me and my content. I want you to know I, I feel awful when I don't give shout outs properly, okay, because of something like that. That's something that's not in my control. I can't make PayPal's API integration with their email delivery service and all of that shit work right. You know, because I've checked, there's nothing wrong with my emails. My emails are good. I've tested them all. They're fine. It's just, it's PayPal. So I apologize, but, you know, it just sucks. So like, for example, the other day, there was a $50 tip that I didn't see. And I was like, are you kidding me? That's a giant contribution. And it went like an hour un uncalled out and it really sucked. So please let me know. And by the way, just so you know, if you get trolls in here who are going to fake it, obviously I'm going to ignore them. It's just for regulars who are, you know, I know who you are. If you contribute, I trust you. So I'll, I would check, you know. Okay. <clears throat> that is true. Battle Duck says, what about anonymous tips? Because shouting out, hey, you missed my tip defeats the purpose of being anonymous. You're absolutely right. You're, you are correct. Um, so honestly, if you're an anonymous tipper, yeah, this might be an oversight. But maybe if I do, if I check, you know, just to see if anything's missing, I could catch those. What really sucks about this is I wish the app would work right. 
The app doesn't work. The app used to be beautiful. The app used to be able to go into the app easily. And then you could just go right in and check all your contributions. Everything was right there. They changed the app in the last year. And now it barely works. I'm serious. Like they fucked up their own app. Now, when you click on a contribution, you can't see any data associated with it. So when I click on it, I can't see your message, your name, nothing. So what's the point? I can't shout it out. All I can say is, oh, I got a tip. Wow. But I can't see any data on it. I have to log in to my actual desktop to, to see data on these tips now, which is really stupid. I don't. It's really weird when they, they think they're advancing technology and it goes backward. It's like exactly like with the PS5. We're going to add amazing adaptive triggers and we're going to add... Uh, what's the name of the feedback? I can't remember what it's called. The, the special feedback, adaptive triggers. Oh, by the way, we're going to remove dual audio out. <laughs> right? We're going to remove other features. Wait, what are you doing? It's great you added some new things in. Why are you taking away things that people use? And that's what they do. They're like, oh, we're updating our app. We're adding in all these new features. Yeah, but now your app does It took you away half the features I used to use. Why'd you do that? Right? So that's really frustrating in that regard. Um, and again, I apologize. So, Oh, really? Little Shake and Bake is saying they became the biggest member level on Patreon. How do I tell you what I want for my video? Um, you just did it this moment? If you just did it this moment, I wouldn't have known about it ahead of time. So I wouldn't have. I already did my members' me uh, messages and everything for the month. Shit, I'm trying to think how can I remember because I need to send you a message on Patreon now and then you can respond to the private message with your data, but I have to think how can I remember to do that because I know I'm going to forget about it the moment that I get up. <laughs> the moment I start streaming, I will not remember this. Um, Because the thing is, you're in luck. I can make your video on Sunday, tomorrow. I could squeeze it in and make it with the others. So that's good. Um. Okay, let me... Make a note here. Hold on. Uh, excuse me. Well. So, what will happen is... Later today, I'm going to send you a private message on Patreon. And it'll say, hey, here's, you know, thanks for pledging. Send me the data of what you want. And your options for a private video are either Q&A, if you have like maybe 20 minutes, 25 minutes questions you want to ask me and I'll just answer them for you privately, I could do that. Private React, if you have an idea of one or two videos you want me to watch, but again, the video has to be around 20, 25 minutes in length, the, the React video. <clears throat> so... Think about it, and I'll send you that today. And you, if you send me that data by tomorrow night, because uh, I'm not doing a late stream tomorrow night, that means I can actually make your video tomorrow night. Pretty cool, right? <clears throat> okay, cool. Thank you, Little Shake and Bake. I appreciate that. Okay, I received my first tip of the day, a $3 tip. From Love It or Leave It, will you play Metal Gear 3 Remastered? Yes, I will. Absolutely, I will. I'm very interested in that. Indeed, I am. Indeed, I am interested in that. I'm interested in the Silent Hill 2 remake. A lot of these remakes will be fun, I feel. Like, I played the originals, but basically from the HD collections that came out over the years. Um, but to see these games truly fully modernized might be really neat. So, yeah, I'm definitely down for those, for sure. Ghost, no, unfortunately, I did not get my dream sandwich on my day off. We ordered Thai food again. The same Thai food we had ordered on Christmas Eve. And it was super good, so I'm still happy. But you're right, I, I did not get a sandwich. Maybe this coming week I'll get a sandwich. <laughs> no, I'm not getting AI to read donations for me. That's ridiculous. All right, so guys, I think now I've caught up on everything so far. I'll keep taking a look. But this means we have ample opportunity today for Q&A. All right, so please tag me in the chat. Let's see what you guys would like to talk about this morning when it comes to Q&A, and, uh, and we'll go from there. JDTV, good morning. Good to see you. You're not asleep this time. 
How's it going? You're actually, are you well rested for Resident Evil today? <clears throat> Leonardo says, I think chicken parm is the best sandwich. Indeed, chicken parm is great. Seriously, chicken parm is amazing. I don't get good chicken parm because it doesn't really exist out here. There's no real good Italian places. There's like maybe one and you have to make reservations and I've, I haven't gone there in years. Like COVID threw everything into disarray. So yeah. So Rebecca says, is the suggestion box still a thing? Yeah, I still have it open and I can always go on a day when I have absolutely nothing to talk about. We could still do like a giant segment with the suggestion box. But as you've seen recently, we've had a lot going on, a lot to talk about. So we haven't done it, but we can always go back and do more of it. Uh, but right now, I feel like today we'll just do some Q&A. I do not have a favorite horror movie. Usually, my, movies from the 80s are my faves. Whether it's the slasher movies like Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, whether it's like amazing movies like The Thing with crazy special effects, those are my faves. Uh, JDTV says, indeed, he, has, he is well-rested. He had a good rest at 9 p.m. there. What about me? Am I doing good? I'm doing pretty good. I'm feeling good for the day. I'm excited. Resident Evil Zero, I actually enjoyed the other day, and I think now it's going to get better because we're in the mansion. <clears throat> I like classic survival horror, so I'm pumped for that. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm ready to go. Paris. You're in Paris. Thought Dan is in Paris. He says, greetings from Paris. I'm a big fan. What's it like? What's life like in Paris? I want to know. Is, are all the stereotypes true? Does everyone w go around wearing striped white and black shirts and berets? Riding unicycles, eating cheese, drinking wine in the streets, grapes, feasting on grapes? Is that what it's like there? Does everyone say, ha ha ha, before they speak? <laughs> Every possible awful stereotype. They're all true, right? Every one of them. <clears throat> Good morning, No Sleep Real Vibes. He says he's excited for Silent Hill coming this year as well. Thought Dan says, yes, very, it's a very expensive city. Oh, I'm sure. Just like when I moved out here 10 years ago now, if you can believe it, guys, the 10th anniversary of me moving out here is right around the corner. This June is my 10-year anniversary of being a Washingtonian, Okay. So when I moved out here, a lot of people questioned me and said, why did you move <clears throat> to a suburb of Seattle instead of Seattle? Like, don't you want to be in the thick of things? Don't you want to be like right next to all the action? And I'm like, no, because if you live in the major city, the price of everything exponentially increases. Seriously, to get a home in Seattle likely would have cost me double the cost of what I paid for this house which is in a suburb of Seattle, just because you're in the city. Plus, gas prices, taxes, sale, everything's just more expensive. It, may, it would have made no sense. Now, the other thing is, Seattle was nice when I moved here, but in the last three to four years, Seattle has become crime-ridden, and a lot of businesses and people have said they're, they're gone. They don't want to be there. They're not going to, you know. Imagine if I lived in Seattle and crime exponentially increased... It's like, wow, I would have not only killed myself on prices, but also the whole safety issue. That would have been terrible. So I, I really feel like I did make the right decision uh, moving where I did because I could have really got myself into a pickle, right? I said yes to playing Metal Gear Solid 3 Remaster, love it or leave it. I'm absolutely playing it, 100%. What's for dinner today? I think Kat is making homemade chicken noodle soup, if, I'm, if I remember correctly. Um... I think it's egg noodles and chunks of white meat chicken. I think carrots, celery. Um, other, there's other stuff too. I can't remember what it is. I know we bought a bunch of stuff like chicken stock and beef bouillon and other things. And she's going to cook the veggies up first and add the chicken after. And it's, it's going to be really good. Homemade chicken noodle soup. Oh, we bought a big giant Italian bread that we're going to cut up and dip in the soup. It should be really good. Who's the better cook, me or cat? Cat. I'm not very good at cooking. I mean, I can make very basic things. Not, I'm not a great cook. I don't do it enough to be good at it, you know. Sounds like we need RoboCop in Seattle. Uh, what, what we need is support for the cops in Seattle because that's the problem. It's not that the police don't want to do their job. It's that they lost the support of the people and the government. So 
oh, look, we're witnessing a crime taking place. Oh, no, they got into a car and they're driving away. You can't follow them. Oh. But we want to stop the criminals. Too bad. Oh. And then if you get a criminal and you arrest them, they get right out anyway. No, slap on the wrist. So they're right back out doing it again. We have organized crime rings here for theft. They've actually found entire houses. They look like a normal house from the outside. They break in. The entire house wall to wall is stolen goods. Electronics, jewelry, drugs, clothing, anything you can think of. The, the house has like four or five million dollars of product inside of it. And all they're doing, there's these organized crime rings, of like hundreds of criminals. They just go to the stores every day, steal, shoplift, bring it to the house, drop it off, and then they sell it on the black market, resell it. It's, it's a giant thing out here. They, have, they still have these groups of people. They steal a car overnight. They drive the car into the front of a building that's glass. So it could be a bank. It could be a, a, a drugstore. It could be one of these pot refineries. Because remember, we actually have, or not refineries, uh, so pot, not, uh, what's the word for it? The pot dispensaries. They drive right into the front of the pot dispensary, walk in, steal all the pot, steal all the money, walk out. No one catches them. They just keep doing it over and over. It's been it's been going on for like two years. And that's how bad it's gotten out here. You know? It's awful. Who wants to who wants to live in that? Obviously, if you have a show, you're like, what the hell is going on? And the cops are like powerless. They try they the police you cannot blame the police. They want to help. And what's happened is because the police cannot do their jobs, everyone's quitting. We have we actually have the lowest percent of cops to populace in the entire United States all the cops quit because they don't want to do it because they're like why do we want to have a job where we don't get support to do our job and then if we do our job right we get told we did it wrong and we get sued after the fact you know so it's been pretty terrible man okay we got some shout outs to do here I start off with a dollar fifty tip. Hope you, Cat and Jasper Kitty, are having a good weekend. Thank you very much, whoever that anonymous tipper was. A very nice sentiment. Uh, so far, so good. You know, the weekend's just starting for us, but uh, hoping for the best. And uh, certainly, things are good on stream today. So thank you for that. I received a twelve dollar and ten cent tip from Sensei Ball Chin. Sensei Ball Chin. <clears throat> Hold on a second here. Let me play the animation. <laughs> okay, Sensei. So Sensei Ball Chin says, Take my money. God, you magnificent bastard. Please keep it going. Well, there you go. Thank you so, thank you so much, Sensei. I appreciate your contribution and support, Sensei. Thank you so very much. Now, I would put that on the leaderboard, except that I received a $25 tip from One Minute Man. Thank you so very much, One Minute Man, for your daily support of all of my streams and content. I really appreciate that. And that will be our biggest contribution so far of the day. So let's get One Minute Man up on the leaderboard as I show off this gaudy suitcase full of cash. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> Gotta love these new animations for the new year. So, we were at 5, and then it was 12, so it would have been 17. 17 plus, so it's 42, because 17 plus 25, so we should be at 42, correct? <clears throat> $42 in tips? <clears throat> or am I off? <clears throat> it was 12 plus 5 is 17. 17 plus 25 is 42, that's right. Why am I asking? I'm acting like I'm so... I'm not confident in my my arithmetic anymore for some reason. Maybe as I get older. I used to be really good at arithmetic. <clears throat> Maybe I'm terrible at it now. Anyway. All right. So thank you guys for your tips. Thank you, One Minute Man, for the biggest contribution so far today. That means we're very close to the Tier 1 tips goal already. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> Love it or leave it says, this is its anniversary. What are your thoughts on January 6th? Oh, it's a lovely day. It's an absolutely lovely day. No, if anything, January 6th stands as a testament to the absolute stupidity of humanity. Because 
an event happened, yet who you ask, they'll completely tell you something different happened. How is that possible? We all saw it happen, right? We saw what happened, what was it, two years ago, three years ago, January 6th? I don't even remember the date anymore, what, what the original date was. But we all saw it unfold live. It was televised. But if you ask someone today what happened, you'll get four different stories. It's like, how the fuck do you not know what happened? <laughs> what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Like, it was 2021. See, I don't even remember anymore. I can't even remember the year, right? That's like, how can you how can you even dispute what happened? It's literally been all over the world news for three fucking years. You know what I mean? Like, these people are out of their minds. But anyway, I'm not going to get political. As you know, I'm not a political guy. At least not in the present day. Maybe in the future. But that's, now is not the day to become political. So, there you go. Okay. What happened? Apparently there was a cosplay party or something at the Capitol. Apparently. Depending on who you ask. There's a bunch of cosplayers. <laughs> Can't wait for the DSP politics channel to start, says Swagonito. Oh, uh, brother. I really I really feel like when it if and when I ever do that. You know what I mean? It's just gonna be such a shitstorm. It'll be such a wild shitstorm. <laughs> I don't know. Am I, do, I, do we do any grilling or smoking this summer? No, we do not have a grill or a smoker. We do not. Maybe one day we will get a grill for the backyard. But the thing here's the thing, okay? We live in a state where there's tons of precipitation. For most of the fall, winter, and even a big chunk of the spring, it's mostly cloudy and rainy outside, meaning you would never grill. The only time you would really actively grill is maybe three months a year, right? So most people out here don't have grills, even though I've seen some people in their backyards. Most people don't even bother with it because it's just not something that would actively be used all the time. If we used it, it would be nice. It would certainly be nice to go out there, grill some hot dogs, grill some chicken legs, right? Grill some some thighs. Grill, You know, that's good. That's And that's quick cooking too. It's not a big deal. You just toss it. I get a nice char on there or whatever. Yeah, I agree. But it, it, basically if I live somewhere that was – more of an outdoorsy climate all the time then probably I would consider doing it more actively but my problem is like, let's say I get a grill 90% of the year it's covered and then it's going to rot because it's going to get wet and, and you know when you're in precipitation all the time it's going to be humid and wet it's going to end up rotting out but that my parents had a grill in Connecticut and that happened to their grill and Connecticut has way less precipitation than we have out here so haven't really actively looked at that okay <clears throat> Uh, no Sleep Real Vibes says the only positive you made a DSP politics more views on your videos and lots of Q&A just the fact that I'm talking politics the videos would get more views because they're drama right anything that's drama gets views so just the videos would absolutely explode in views because of the drama associated with it I'm absolutely sh I'm sure of that um, but that doesn't equate into something positive for a viewing audience nor a business you know what I mean drama so it's Snoopy says, did you hear about the mall in Miami that's been attacked by aliens? Yes. It was awful. It was absolutely awful. Waves and waves of illegal aliens struck the mall in Miami. No, I'm <laughs> no, apparently what happened was in Miami, I guess, there was a big fight that broke out, and it just got bigger and bigger, and people are saying it was a bunch of teenagers. So it almost became like a riot, and then the cops showed up in droves to stop it, but then didn't say anything about what was going on, so everyone was like just making shit up. You know, <clears throat> anyway, let's continue. I received a two dollar and seventy cent tip from Wilfredo. I recently enjoyed your Robocop playthrough. If you're interested, the movies are now on Max for you to watch. I noticed that someone had mentioned that last week, and I checked, and both Robocop 1 and 2 is on Max now. And I actually mentioned it to Kat because uh, we've been watching someone else's Robocop playthrough. And they're nearing the end of the game. So maybe once we finish watching them finish the game, then maybe we would consider watching the Robocop movie. So thank you for the heads up. Ooh, excuse me. <clears throat> Sadly, Ghost, we do not have a patio. We have a backyard, but it is not covered. And that's the problem. Like, we don't have... We don't really have a good space to do stuff. 
there is some concrete where we could put a grill, but then the grill would just sit there unused for most of the year. If we had like a a nice backyard area, we'd probably do a lot. We'd probably get like a table and some chairs and stuff, but we just don't have a really good one. <clears throat> okay. Um, I received a $10 tip from Tarantula MS. He says, hey, Phil, what's going on, Tarantula? It's good to see you. I hope you're doing well. And uh, thanks for the contribution. I appreciate that. I, and uh, happy new year. I don't remember if we've spoken in the new year or not. It's only been a few days into the new year. But welcome and thanks. And with that, we've already hit our tier one tips goal for today, which is excellent. Thank you guys so much for that. Get the gunner glasses going. Okay. Okay, uh, good. Let's keep going. I received another $2 tip. From Slurpee. They said, sadly, Seattle's turning into a hellhole. Purchase flat tires for your car so you can stand a chance getting back home if you venture out. What does that even mean? Purchase run flat tires? What does that mean? <laughs> I don't even know what those are. I've never heard of a run flat tire before. Uh, no, it's sad. When I when I, ten years ago, okay, I was house hunting, looking to move out of Connecticut and move somewhere. All right, and when I went to Seattle, all right, I was blown away. I was like, it's a nice town. You can walk around. The people are friendly. There's a lot of good touristy things to do. There's good food. There's a waterfront with awesome seafood. There's a, a, a cool mall there. There's a Ferris wheel. There's Pike Place Market where you can buy all these cool independent stores and all their goods that they make, handcrafted stuff in a lot of cases. Uh, the Space Needle, the Pop Culture Museum, the Pacific Science Center. There's all this neat stuff. Then you can go to downtown and there's good eating, there's good shopping, right? I took the monorail a couple times. I'm like, this is amazing. And then basically, what ended up happening was, you know, ever since the, I would say 2020, the pandemic, the pandemic spearheaded so many things that changed American society. And see, I, I remember that was the chop started and all of that shit and the lawlessness and the cops were basically, the power was taken away. And think like, I, I know people, they hear me and they say, well, I, you must be exaggerating. All you have to do is search for Seattle news in the last four years and you're gonna see article after article after article. Businesses are shutting down. Businesses have been robbed. Businesses complaining, why is there lawlessness? Why are people not stopping the crime? We don't wanna be here anymore. We can't operate anymore because of this awfulness here. And, um, you know, tourism is way, way down. Everything is way down because of it you know business entire businesses that used to operate in the fact that seattle was a safe fun family city have completely shut down and are gone now Ta big businesses like like target shut down a downtown seattle store target it's a fucking corporate entity ginormous you would think they're immune no they closed their store because they just it was just people walking in do, 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 walk right out that was the store every day all their products stolen and no one doing anything you know fights breaking out and no one doing anything about it. It's a, so what are you going to do? It sucks. I don't, I want to go back to Seattle with my wife. I want to have a nice time in Seattle. We can't do that right now. We have to wait for things to improve and change before we would go back. No Super Bowl vibes says I'm jealous because in California we hardly get any rain or snow. I gladly trade weather with you. The reason that I moved out here weather-wise is the moderation. We get moderate weather, meaning we're not supposed to get extreme heat, but we're also not supposed to get extreme cold. Like right now, it's January 6th. Here's what the temperature outside. You ready? 41 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? And the coldest it's going to get all week, one night coming up this week, it'll be 28 degrees. So one night, there's potential for some frost overnight. But we just, we don't get significant 
precipitation when it comes to snow. And we're not supposed to have extreme heat, but we have in the last few years had extreme heat. So it seems like because of this global warming thing, we are getting hotter temperatures than we used to get. But this entire fall, winter, this is my favorite time of year. It's moderate temperatures. It's cool. I can wear a nice shirt like this, nice, cool, calm in my office. I'm not sweating it out, right? This is nice. I like this. So that's why I moved here. You know, I didn't want the extremes of too much heat, not enough precipitation, or on the flip side of that, always constant precipitation, but it's like tropical or snow. That's the thing. Like, snow is cool, but not if it completely hinders your life. We have constant snow out here, right? It's like, how are you going to get to work? How are you going to move around? It affects things like internet and shit. It does because we wait on the lines and shit, have problems. So I'm glad we don't have that, you know? But that's why, that's that was definitely one of my considerations, understanding the more moderate temperatures out here. Jade, good to have you here today. How are you, Jade? Welcome to the stream. <clears throat> Excuse me. JDTV, that is a complete political thing, and I'm not taking that bait whatsoever. Sorry. I don't know who the tallest man I've ever seen is. I don't recall. Jade, I'm glad to hear you're good. I don't care what Trump said about Miami aliens. <laughs> I don't know why you thought I was going to engage with that comment. I'm not. I'm definitely not engaging with that one. <clears throat> what is my height? Five foot eleven. I'm five foot eleven. No, there is no PS5 Pro at this time. That does not exist. I used to shop at Trader Joe's, but we stopped during the pandemic. Basically, again, I keep telling you the pandemic like changed a lot of stuff. My wife and I used to like shopping there because they have some unique products, some good quality food. Um, and then when, during the pandemic, you know, we stopped going out a lot and stopped doing a lot of things we were regularly doing. So we just, we haven't been there in ages. Uh, am I playing Skull and Bones? Probably not. The game looks awful. The game looks atrociously terrible like an unfinished mess that they basically just are forced to release, so I'm probably not playing it. <clears throat> Idris, I have no idea what country I would move to if I could choose another one. I, I haven't looked into it. Do I believe in aliens? No, but I also don't disbelieve in aliens. I don't... I, I see myself as someone who would be willing to believe something if presented with evidence, but I've never been presented with evidence... So I'm not going to say they exist or don't exist because I haven't seen anything, you know, either way. <clears throat> I will tell you this, though. If aliens were to land, they absolutely would be shopping at a Miami mall. There's nowhere else that they would be, right? Like anywhere else in the world... A beautiful landscape or maybe like a big landmark you know New York City or maybe the Vatican or you know maybe the top of, of a, a beautiful giant like the Himalayan mountains no they're gonna land right at the Miami Mall let me tell you that's the place <laughs> oh yeah yeah why didn't I like the last of us too I hated the story I thought the gameplay elements were great and improved from the first game. I thought the graphics were absolutely outstanding. I thought the voice work and acting was amazing. The design of the stages, like I live in Seattle and to see this area that's kind of like real life Seattle <clears throat> represented in the game was amazing. And the plot was dog shit. So that's what killed it for me. I mean, it's a narrative based game with all these great gameplay elements, but if the narrative is trash and paced poorly and written poorly and retcons everything from the first game, then I tend not to care. And that's what happened to me, so. <clears throat> I 
Do I think there should be another Marvel vs. Capcom game or has it run its course? The problem is, if they make another Marvel vs. Capcom game, they're not going to focus on making it a good fighting game. They're going to focus on making it a flashy fighting game to sell copies. Because that's the purpose it's, ser it's served. Marvel vs. Capcom, back in the day, or the original series, the Versus series, was very flashy, but also was very sound. It had technical aspects to it. The execution level was very high to be good at those games. You couldn't just pick up the game and immediately start kicking everyone's ass. It took a lot of practice and a lot of character knowledge and a lot of uh, timing and everything. Then, when Marvel vs. Capcom 3 came out, that all changed. Literally, that game doesn't take a lot of skill at all, or execution, I should say. It's more about getting that one hit and leading to the end of the game and just playing solid after that. But the sad fact is, they dumbed it down. And when they dumbed the game down, it didn't become competitively fun anymore. Most people who played that game played it for the flashiness because everyone liked watching it on a stream or at a tournament. But ultimately, if you ask them, they'd be like, nah, you know, competitively, it's just not that good. It's literally a one-hit kill game. But, hey, it's flashy, and it gets butts and seats and gets attendance going and everything. So, you know, it was very hype for a very long time. Um, so there you go. You know, but I think if they were to bring back Marvel vs. Capcom and they redid the game and it became a competitively sound game, I would love it. If it played like Marvel vs. Capcom 2, I would love it. If it played like Marvel 3, I would hate it. But you know it's going to play like Marvel 3. I mean, people don't even have the execution skill to play these kind of games like they used to be played anymore. Right now, if you tried to introduce someone to a game like Street Fighter 3 Third Strike or Capcom vs. SNK 2, they wouldn't be able to do it. They'd be like, oh, I can't play it. But you could play Street Fighter 6, right? But you can't play those games? No, I can't do it. Because those games had better execution requirement. They were much stricter and much harder to play. <clears throat> the other problem you got to remember also is for a game like Marvel vs. Capcom, the licensing is a huge issue. It's a ton of licensing. Every Marvel character they get, they're paying for, right? So to get that licensing, it's a big investment. It's like, well, are we going to... are we? At, going to make a profit because we're using those characters right then take a look at a game like tatsunoko versus capcom which literally was supposed to be like a game they didn't have the marvel licensing so they made tatsunoko versus capcom and it didn't sell because no one knows what the fuck tatsunoko is outside of japan so it didn't make money so then they went back to getting the marvel licensing <laughs> <clears throat> uh rebecca says how long is your documentary going to be well let's see the documentary has not filmed anything. The documentary is still in the planning stages. I'm not making the documentary. So I might not be the right person to ask. But I think that the, the target time frame is about an hour. Okay? It's kind of silly to ask me that question in January. Just saying. Will I give The Last of Us Part 3 a chance? See, here's the thing. If I play The Last of Us 3, I'm already setting myself up for a disappointment. Because I know the story of 2 was terrible, and you know the same person who wrote 2 is writing 3. So, unless there's a complete change of narrative style, uh, you know, tone of the game. Like, the reason I didn't like Last of Us 2, number one, the narrative style was terrible. You start the game at one point, you have a horrible thing that happens in the plot that completely discredits everything you know about the characters from the first game. It made no sense whatsoever. Then you're forced back in time for a second half of the game. It's just, The whole narrative structure is broken and terrible. It doesn't even tell a coherent story because of the way it's written, but no one calls out Druckmann for it. He's terrible at telling a story. Really, he is. He's jumping all over timelines and shit. It doesn't make sense. It's a jumbled mess. That's number one. Number two, the entire tone of the game is misery. There's not any good moments in the game besides the one flashback with Joel and Ellie, which is reminiscent of the first game. The rest of the game is just awful misery. There's nothing fun about the story of that game. Why do I want to play a misery game? I have enough misery in my own fucking life. I don't need to be feel, feel like shit as I play a game for 25 hours because this guy can't write a single piece of hopefulness because he's such a fucking depressing guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't play video games to get sad and depressed. I play video games to escape my reality 
of things that could make me sad and depressed and give me entertainment. The story was not entertaining in any way. So that's why I hated the game. Now, if part three is different <clears throat> and it's a different tone and that, first of all, the narrative structure makes sense. It isn't confusing and disjointed and frustrating as shit. If the guy takes some writing courses, maybe, and understands how to write a story, number one. And number two, if he actually writes a story that's not torture porn depression all t the entire 25 hours, then maybe I would like part three. But I guarantee you, he's going to continue on with his pattern because he thinks that he's some kind of a fucking super genius, when in reality, all he does is he preys on weak-minded people by telling them that his themes are amazing and progressive, so you must worship my work. If you don't, you're a bigot, right? And people fall for that shit because they're weak-minded. So I guarantee you the third game will be more of the same schlock. So... Do I play a game with great graphics, great gameplay elements, great level design, and shit story again, twice in a row? Am I not just setting myself up for disaster because I know it's the same shithead making the story? So maybe I shouldn't bother. I don't know. <clears throat> Will I eventually play Fight Cage sometime this year? Likely yes at some point, yes. I don't see why not. It's just I wanted to play Tekken first, but likely, yes, this year we will give Fright Kate a shot. Thank you, Derek. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Steak Sandwich's awesome glasses. Have you never seen these before? I've been wearing them for over a year. <laughs> yeah, of course. See, Sarah says, can you accept lots of people enjoyed Last of Us Part Two's story? Maybe it's not your cup of tea. That's fine. I outright have said that all along. If you like the story of Last of Us 2, you likely think it's one of the best games of all time, and you more power to you if you genuinely enjoyed it. If you didn't just like it because you were told that it was a good story and the themes are progressive and you need to like it because if you don't, you're a bigot. If that's the case, like if you didn't like the game because you felt like it was a big feel-good movement of good pu pu pushing towards the right direction for games, then that's fine. But... A lot of people were on that fucking bandwagon. Tons of people were on that bandwagon. They were even saying things like, Neil Druckmann can do no wrong. When he was outright saying things on his Twitter account like, a vote for The Last of Us 2 is a vote against hatred and bigotry at the Game Awards. And people were like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's the Game Awards. You're supposed to be voting for the games that are genuinely good, not for progressive-themed political things. What are you saying? Then he had to remove that from his Twitter and publicly apologize because he was being so disingenuous with the, with the public, you see? So that's what I mean. If you liked the game genuinely and you stayed out of that shit, great. But the problem is most people didn't. Most people ate it up. They ate up that positive movement shit and that's, they became, oh, it's such a great game because he's progressive and it's this and that. I don't play a game for political themes. I play a game because it's a good game. And it's a shame because I felt like all the good things in that game were overshadowed by the politics because that's what Druckmann decided to do with his game. That was his active, positive, conscious choice to do. He could have stayed out of all of that. He decided not to. He decided to capitalize on that. And that's really what my problem with that game is. If you're going to have a game, have it be la lauded and applauded on its own laurels. Not because you made a political movement behind it to make it feel like it was the right thing to do to like a fucking video game. That's ludicrous to me. <clears throat> uh, no, I have no plans to get any kind of a gaming PC anytime soon, no. Eventually, I might have to get one, a new one to upgrade my setup as is. Right now, my setup seems to be doing fine for capturing and streaming. I have a mini PC to do mid-level to low-level games. My consoles are good. Everything in my setup seems fine right now. Uh, but it's very possible that I might actually have to get another PC at some point. I just don't know when. Uh, what we've been doing is talking about waiting because uh, basically all of these prices on, on PC components are dropping a lot, right? Like recently, the last year or two, that if I had bought that... Remember 2022... During the summer of 2022, on this very show, we outlined all the components I would need for, like, a good a good PC. And, like, a cheap one would have been, like, 1500 A future-proof one would have been, like, 3000 What people are saying now is because the price of components is dipping, now it's, like, way cheaper. So it makes sense to kind of wait a little bit. <clears throat> and now, uh, 
you know, we're at a situation where where maybe if I, you know, next one to two years, if the components keep dropping, I can get a really good PC for like half or less than what it costed two or three years ago, right? <clears throat> I guess we'll see. <clears throat> Parasolo says, it's actually good you waited. 40 series GPU are really good if the game has frame generation. I have no idea what any of that means, but great. Joe Law says, if they decide to kill off Ellie in a potential Last of Us 3, that's it for me. I'm done. That being said, Last of Us 1 was about love. Last of Us 2 was about hate. Last of Us 3 should have a different theme again. There you go. <clears throat> there you go. When is my YouTube anniversary? It depends on what you mean by that. My original content uploaded to YouTube was in the f middle of the summer of 2007, and it was from a, sh a Street Fighter tournament in the Midwest. If you're talking about active playthroughs, I started putting up active video game playthroughs in September of 2008 onward. So already I've had my 15 year anniversary as a playthrough creator. I'm actually coming up on my 16 years anniversary. <clears throat> Yes, I watched The Last of Us TV series, and I reviewed it on DSP Reacts. You can go check it out. JDTV, enjoy the games you're going to play. Sounds good. Are we good? Did we cover everything, everybody? Are we good to go? I guess we can, uh, we can adjourn and wrap up then. So another quick reminder for those who weren't here at the beginning of the show... DSP Throwback is now live and in full effect. Now three parts of Final Fantasy XIII are live. Part four is actually already ready to go, but that'll go live tomorrow morning. The, the estimated goal is to try to have like a part a day, but that doesn't mean that it's going to happen. I'm not promising that. Um, please enjoy. What I'm hoping is that maybe within a week I can repartner that channel, which would be amazing if I could and get some advertisements on these new videos I'm putting up. Um, and we're going to keep it going with that momentum. And as long as you guys like the content, you know, things will probably go well. And what I'm talking about is the possibility <clears throat> that in the future, we'll continue with the Lost Media playthroughs like Red Dead Redemption or L.A. Noir. Um, but I'm curious if you guys would want me to put up all of Final Fantasy 13 or not because it's going to be like a 60-parter, uh, which means it's going to take like two months. Or would you like me to put out some and then maybe at some point alternate instead? Instead of doing all Final Fantasy, maybe also do another, you know, alternate between two. But that would mean it would take longer for Final Fantasy because I'm not going to be doing two playthroughs at once because of all the, the workload there. Uh, so there's a lot to talk about on DSP Throwback. Check out the earlier part of the show if you didn't see it. I want to say thank you all <clears throat> for a great podcast this morning. I hope that you all enjoyed. And uh, so far, I'd say this new year has been a great one, huh? Seriously, playthroughs are great. Channel launch is great. The future looks bright. Super secret mystery stream coming up Wednesday night. <laughs> All kinds of fun stuff. So I hope that you guys are enjoying the ride. Happy New Year, of course, to everyone. And I will see you soon for another edition of the Level 1 Podcast.